now, the CTO and co-founder of Billy, uh, a fantastic uh, uh, invo uh, invoice and factoring uh, service, if I'm right, in France. The amazing work as far as how they've been able to uh, revolutionise uh, small business cash flows uh, by using open banking APIs. So uh, a fascinating talk coming up from Artem. Hey, Artem. Hi, Mark. Hi, everyone. Wonderful. From That's... sunny Berlin, where I am at the moment. Nice. Lovely. Um, <laughs> uh, and so, yes, yeah, so you're from Billy. Billy is the uh, factoring and invoicing financial service. Is that right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we are doing. We are primarily focused on small and medium-sized businesses and Yes, we are doing the work in capital, but not only at the moment. Uh, there are a bit more financial services, and we are also working with uh, e-commerce platforms in terms of um, being able to finance their invoices. So it's more like a payment method. Excellent. So important at the moment with COVID that, you know, as we've been talking about throughout today, you know, just small businesses being able to have that um, greater control over their, uh, how they optimize their cash flow. You know, a lot of their payments coming in are taking like a few months. So, you know, like, so being able to better manage all of that and have a consistent uh, uh, cash coming into your business is really important. So um, a great work that Billy's doing in that regard. You're going to be talking about API scraping today. Exactly. Yes. Thank you, Mark. So yes, we'll be talking about API scraping and especially how to protect our APIs from such kind of attacks that actually don't always look like attacks from the user perspective. And I'll let that's you what start. we will see. Okay, I'll let you start. Great work. Thanks, Adam. Thank you, Mark. So yes, as Mark already said, I'm CTO and co-founder at Billy. We are based in Berlin. The company is still relatively small and the engineering uh, department of this company is about 35 people. So um, yes, protection and security is one of our key needs nowadays because it's a financial service and we are dealing with money of our customers and what's also or probably even more important with money of their customers. So uh, the agenda for today is going to contain the following parts, the following topics. Uh, first one, we'll talk uh, about the API scraping itself and why it may not look like an attack. Afterwards, we will talk about why we should worry about that. Then uh, we'll look at the conception of KYCB. Um, most of you are familiar with the conception of KYC, know your customers and KYCB. It's just an acronym I came up with yesterday for this presentation and I will explain you what it means later. Then we'll look at how to recognize that your API is being scraped and then afterwards how to stop it. Or uh, what's more important, is it even possible? Because um, while working on this presentation, or even before, while facing API scraping attacks uh, here at Billy or uh, before in different companies, uh, I read some information and it's quite uh, true that some people think it's not possible to stop API scraping completely. So uh, that's what we will try to uh, talk about and we will try to figure out how to do that actually. And then in the end, uh, there will be a small bonus. Uh, we'll see, so when we uh, reach this point. So let's begin with some numbers. If you look at the report of a company uh, called Distill Net Networks from 2016, it says that 46% of web traffic, uh, traffic are scraping bots. And 2% uh, of online revenue is lost due to web scraping not only API scraping, but web scraping in general, but still the number is huge. Uh, if you look at, for example, e-commerce only, last year, 
2019, the global e-commerce sales were three and a half trillion dollars and 2% from it are more than $70 billion. So if it is true, then $70 billion are lost every year due to web scrapping. So that's why it's dangerous. And uh, that's why it's important to protect your APIs from it. Uh, if you look at what kind of API attacks are in place, some of them were already mentioned today during the previous presentations. Uh, what's common about these attacks, about DDoS, DOS attacks, injections, man in the middle, application abuse, and so on, all of these attacks are actually unexpected API usage. It's not what you can expect while building your API, or it's not what you can expect from your customers who use your product. If you look at uh, DOC, uh, DOS attacks or DDoS attacks, uh, it's like an enormous traffic in case of distributed attacks. It's even coming from a botnet from different IP addresses. Unlikely it's what your customers will do. That's why such behavior is more or less predictable and there are ways of dealing it. But if you look at API scraping, it's different. So API scraping is a pretty ordinary and expected user behavior. Uh, if we talk about ideal API scraping, of course, we are not uh, planning to talk about how to organize an ideal API scraping here, but how to protect our APIs from it. But yes, it may look like absolutely ordinary and expected use of behavior. It won't try to hijack or break anything in your system. And the main point of interest for attackers in this scenario is your content. It's what you have behind your API, what your API serves. That's why it's not always easy to identify that you are being scraped. So this is how the ordinary user behavior flow may look like in most of the cases. We have a user, we have a UI, we have an API behind that, and there is a data source behind your API that is in most of the cases your database. Um, also, there can be like a modification of it where you don't have any user interface, but you have an API that works as an interface and uh, your customers uh, communicate directly with it. And if you look at scraping, the only tiny modification, the only tiny difference here, if we compare those two, is there is a robot behind your user or a robot that impersonates your user and tries to use your user interface or API exactly the same way as normal users will do. So why is it not allowed in this case? Why is it uh, not allowed apart from what we already described? If you look at, as an example, I took Google Maps and I took their terms of service and uh, it clearly states that scraping is not allowed and customers are not able and should not scrape the content of uh, Google Maps should not scrape information about streets, geographical codes, directions, anything. Uh, and we have to use their APIs. Uh, but this is Google. What about others? What about our companies? Because uh, most of the companies are not Google. And um, if you look at this diagram, it may not look uh, dangerous for our API or for our data, unless we make it a bit more clear. And uh, one way of doing it is to replace the data source with the external API. What if behind your API, you have an external API that serves you a part of the content and you pay for each of the calls that you do against this external API? Or maybe you also have a subscription, but anyway, you pay for that. So what the scraping attackers will do, they will try to scrap not your data, but the data that belong to someone else, to the third party, and use you as a proxy service. And you will, of course, uh, get all the expenses for, for that because you will pay. So what makes API scraping dangerous for us, for API owners in this case? 
First thing is unpredictable expenses. And this is exactly the scenario we just looked at. Um, if we pay to someone, in most of the cases, we get invoices in the end of the month. Or uh, we also have a, an interface, monitoring interface that shows us uh, how much money we already spent in case of AWS, for example, or any other Google, uh, any Google Cloud or any other cloud provider. Um, it exists, we can see it in real time, but unfortunately the reality is that most of data providers, they don't have such interfaces. And uh, we receive invoices in the end of the month and only at this point in time, we know how much money we spent, how many API calls we made. So uh, if we do these calls on our own, these expenses are predictable. We can control it, we can decrease or increase it. It's on us. But when someone else uses our API as proxy to call the actual owner of data, that makes it unpredictable and leads uh, to quite dangerous surprises in the end of the month when we look at invoices, at amounts that are written there. The second part is income losses. Uh, that's exactly the case of Google Maps. What if we have a commercial API, a public API or private API uh, that our customers can use and they can pay for this usage, but instead of um, this, uh, someone else is trying to steal the content by scraping, purely scraping. So this will lead us to income losses. And that's what we saw uh, when we looked at the numbers for e-commerce uh, and uh, more than $70 billion loss uh, last year. The second one is a loss of intellectual property ownership. If we serve a content that belongs to us, that is our intellectual property and we created it, we invested into creation of it, uh, if someone is uh, scraping it and may use in their own uh, purposes, this leads us to the loss of intellectual property. We are not controlling it and we are not controlling what's going to happen with this content anymore. It can also be a loss of competitive advantage. What if our competitors are scraping our APIs in order to get some access to the data that they don't have? And while scraping our API, they will get this access and will use it in order to compete with us. So this will definitely lead, uh, lead us to the loss of competitive advantage. And the fifth one is a risk of being reverse engineered. What if someone is trying to um, understand how our API works? What kind of headers we accept? What kind of JSON body or XML body our APIs accept and what it serves back in this scenario? So this is a risk of being reverse engineered. And if we want to protect our API from all of that, uh, we all are familiar with KYC, know your customers, and now KYB comes, it's a know your customers as behavior. So our customers who are not scrapers, they behave in a way that we can know and we can predict more or less. And any deviation can tell us or at least gives a hint that this is a uh, scraping or any other attack. So there are three uh, main um, helpers that can help us to know customers' behavior. First one is logging. We need to log everything that customers do with our APIs. On top of that, we set up thresholds that can tell us that any violation of these thresholds is probably a non-traditional customer behavior can be an attack. And on top of that, we set up monitoring alerts, number three. And this monitoring alerts is actually uh, something that will immediately notify us. It can send messages to Slack, it can send emails. And actually, uh, I spoke a year ago, I did a nice presentation about how to set up data-driven monitoring alerts with Prometheus and Grafana. And if you are interested, um, Please check it later by this QR code. There is a nice presentation on YouTube available. Let's not stay long on this. Let's uh, talk more about how to prevent API scraping. So prevention of it has different layers. 
The first layer is data thresholds. We already discussed it uh, briefly. So we know that our customers should have, let's say, 10 registrations per day. This is our more or less normal behavior. If we have 100 new users per day, this is maybe something unusual. It can be due to some recent successful marketing campaigns, or it can be because someone is trying to scrape our APIs. The second one is set up HTTP request limits with Nginx, HA proxy, or any other server that we are using can be per user, per time period, per IP, can be anything. Uh, the third one is to set up basic firewall rules. Know the headers. We know the content size that should come from our customers as requests. We know more or less the IPs that uh, we want to receive uh, this request from. We can set up this as firewall rules and control it. Uh, we can also set up more extended rules like geography or even look at patterns, uh, regular expression patterns, for example, that we see in the content of requests. Or there is even one nice database that is called IP abuse database, and it contains the list of reports regarding certain IP addresses that were involved in different kinds of attacks. And uh, it's theoretically possible to build an automatic integration with this website. They also have their commercial API and uh, they also have a nice web interface, which clearly says, please don't scrape it, but use our uh, API. And um, for each IP that comes to your uh, API or your website, you can send an asynchronous request to this service and they can uh, tell you the probability of this IP being involved into different uh, kinds of attacks, including API scraping. And even if this doesn't help, uh, there are some services that do real-time machine learning based bot detection and can block it. For example, Cloudflare or other ones. So we are almost done. And now I want to give you the bonus track, the bonus that I promised in the beginning. So some people say no one can block API scraping completely. But we say API scraping and uh, protection from API scraping is a race and one who stops first loses. So what happened once in my practice, we, our API was being scraped and we started with a simple protection because the scraper was just one IP address that was sending um, set, uh, the requests against our API. We protect it, so we, we set up firewall that blocks this IP. The scraper went further. They set up a different IP. We blocked it as well. They started again from a third IP. We started uh, setting up more smart protection. So we started to look at uh, headers and content and so on, started to block it. And in this scenario, scrapers uh, ordered a botnet, distribute, botnet distributed scraping attack against our website. And we started to behave really differently. We started to protect our API smartly. We started to um, block some countries, uh, block some requests that don't have certain headers, that don't have certain content. We started to, def uh, to uh, understand the patterns and so on. So in the end, we didn't stop and the attacker stopped. And even more we did. And this is the actual bonus. Before scraping, communicate, before starting scraping, before writing the boat, someone as a human being needs to manually discover how your API works. So there is a human being behind this bot in the very beginning of scraping or shortly before. And this person leaves traces. This person leaves traces in your database, in your logs. And if you look at something that happened, let's say one week, two weeks, one month before uh, scraping attack starts, you may find these traces and you may even identify who was it or what was the purpose or what was the behavior. And while analy analyzing this, 
you can build perfect protection. So that's basically it. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. And uh, last but not least, I would like to share another QR code. This is our engineering block uh, on Medium. This is a block of our company. And this presentation will be there. And it contains uh, some more interesting articles, including security as well. So thank you very much. Thanks, Adam. It's great, a great talk. Um, talking through the uh, risks of web scraping and how you can actually uh, build some defenses in your uh, business around it. That's that's great, and you also helped us um, catch up on time a little bit. So I appreciate uh, that as well. Thanks. We don't have any questions in the chat box, but I'd suggest so if people could um, use the QR code or reach out to Adam. Adam, could you go back to the previous slide just quickly? It had your email address just so people can get a screenshot if they needed to. Yes. There we go. Of that and then your LinkedIn as well. So um, please follow up offline in either the stage chat or with Adam directly to discuss the um, uh, the presentations. We've we've got some comments coming through now about how much people appreciated it. But thanks. But to keep us on time and to introduce Yoshiyuki, I'll um, ask Adam now to leave the stage and we'll get um, thanks, our Mark. next. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.